Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to finish up um, our file server. If you remember in the previous section, what we did was we had a, we have a web application going, which has some pages. And one of those pages was a photo wall that we added and the photo wall served up some photos from a remote site. But what we want to do is to be able to serve up our own static images like photos and CSS files and JavaScript files or any of that sort of thing, even the HTML files that doesn't need to be, that are not used as template, we want to be able to serve those up. And so handling that is slightly different. We don't want to create a route for every single file. So we want to basically do is say, we have a route that is going to um, serve up things from a directory. And so the HTTP package already provides us a implementation of a file server. It's actually called file server. And so we're going to see how to use that in this section. So let's jump in. We're going to start where we usually start most time, which is to copy the code from the previous section and modify it. And so what we can do is um, go run our code, make sure that we didn't change anything really, and make sure that that still works. And so it looked like our photo wall still works home directory and so on. So now we want to go create a directory for our images. And so we can create a directory called static and then a directory called images. And the idea is that on the static going to be subdirectories to serving up all kinds of static stuff. In the end, what we really like to have is some route that when you say, give me things that are static or whatever, it would point to there. Now the name we have to use or the route name we're going to use, they call photos as a route or home. It doesn't have to be static. We could be anything we want, but we basically want, uh, we're going to use static though, to point to this directory and pull up things. So let's get our images. And our images that we know, the URL for those are inside this JSON, photos at JSON file. And there are a number of ways you can get it out. I'm going to be fancy here, and I'm going to pretend that all my JSON file had just hundreds of images, and so I'm going to automate, automate the process of downloading them. But you could just grab them, highlight them, and then do curl or get, or just simply right-click on the image on the website and choose copy image or save image to save as image, right? So there are a number of ways that you can get the images. All right, so now that you have your images, I, I'm going to move them to this directory. Um, so they're now in my static images directory. So let's review. Within my current project directory, if I run my application right now, there's a directory called static, and under that is a directory called images, and under images are the three images that I've downloaded. So let's see if I add a route, if I can um, serve up these images. So let's go to the documentation. Like I said, the thing we're looking for is this thing that's called file server. So if we search for it or scroll down, however you want to get to it, and we find it, it says here that our file server is a function that takes a file system object, and then it returns a handler. Now, what is a handler? Well, we can sort of navigate through all this and look at what a file system is, and we see that it's a type that um, implements this interface with just an open method, and DIR, HTTP DIR, is an implementation of file system. Important thing though is to note that file system returns a handler. Now handler, if you click on it and you go look at it, you'll see it all is just also an interface, um, a type that defines an interface that with one method. The file server is simply implementing this handler. And before we've been using handle func, which allows the passive um, string and then a function that has this signature, a handler function that has this signature of a response writer and a pointer to a request. But if you use the previous one, the handle one only, you pass a st string pattern and then the handle function, the handler function, all right? So handle file server already implements this handler function. We go back to our code and use that um, method to create a file server for us. And so here you do HTTP that file server. I remember it needs a file system which is implemented by HTTP.dir, and dir is just a string wrapper around the directory that you want to serve up. So let's pause here and look and see what we have. On line 31, we have a route that says forward slash static, and if anything comes in at forward slash static, it should go to, um, it should point to whatever is inside the directory static images, right? Pretty straightforward. So let's run this now and see if this works. If we go to our command line, compile our code, and then um, build it, of course, you know, that's our compiling and linking, and then run it, 
Then we go to our browser and we try to um, go to the static path, which we created, and we press enter, we'll see that it shows us something very different. It doesn't show us the files that we want. And the reason for this is that we should go read the documentation for the server mocks. Remember, we're using the default server mocks. That's because the last line where we said handle and serve, we pass nil. And note these path, um, these key things. It tell you that how the pattern is fixed and it specify rooted path, like for example, favorite icon, for example, or file, or a sub three, right? So in our case, we wanted to represent a sub tree, specifically images, right? So we do not want to use like static by itself because that represents like a file like object that we want to get. And in the event that none of the path matches, look what happened. It says the slash matches. So that's why when we type static just now, um, for such static, it looked like a rooted um, path and it didn't match anything. So it gave us what was slash, which is our home. So we want this to be static slash to say, hey, no, this is not a, a rooted path, but a subtree. And so now if we go back, build and rerun, let's see now if we're going to get um, the result that we expect. And again, when we run it this time, we still don't quite see what we want. And the reason here is not because it's not really working, but now we see page not found. The reason why this is not working and we can get page not found is because what it's looking for is whatever you pass, you call here static, for example, is saying go under this directory static images and look for that. But if you remember under our static images, we do not have a sub item called static. We have sub items for representing the different images. So for this to actually work the way we're making this request, we actually have to create a subdirectory on the static images called static, and then it will work. And so let's try that. Let's go make a directory on the static images and we'll call it static. And just for testing, we'll also create a file on the static, this nested subdirectory again called test file. And now if we go back and it doesn't matter what we put in the file, we can keep it empty. And if we just ref re refresh, now you see that, yes, yeah, there's our file. We do not see the directory. That's because we are requesting whatever is in static. And so static now is the directory on the static images. So thing. So does that seem confusing? Please read the server mux thing and it's going to make sense. So now we don't want that. That is too nested. That is not what we want. So we're going to delete that. What we really want is the request that we send to be stripped. So we want static to be stripped out and then whatever is left to be said to, to be used on the static images. Does that make sense? So if we are asking for static and it strips out static, then the slash is what is left. And then we want that to represent whatever is on the static images. And so fortunately, there's a function for this called strip prefix because that's what's coming from. That's the prefix. So if we find do a search for strip prefix, there it is. And all it says is, oh, what is the string prefix you want to strip out and give me a handle um, to, to pass the remaining request to. And so you can imagine <laughs> this is what it's really doing is just wrapping around whatever request comes in at that handle. Look at it, strip out the part that path that you tell it or the string you tell it and then pass the rest on. So we're going to save the handler that we get from um, file server in this variable called static handler. And then we're going to create call the strip prefix function saying strip out static and use this static and this file server that we, we already created. And we're going to rerun. And now notice when we run our code, we get exactly what we expect. So we can try and see if this putting a slash or say strip out a static without the slash or whatever works. And we can see it doesn't matter. Now we could go back to our JSON file and update it so that it uses um, the path for our server. And as you can see, it works. And to test it, we can go examine the images and we'll see that our their source is pointing to our local server. Now, when you refresh it because it's cached, you're not going to see it fetch it more than once. Let's imagine that we go add some more subdirectories to our static directory. Like I said, we can add CSS, JavaScript. So we're going to add two CSS files one for our own page and one for our photos page. And again, I'm not going to go over how you manage CSS or HTML. 
So let's go refresh our um, URL now. Now, when we refresh it, we do not see our nested directories. That's because our handler is saying that when you go to static, go to the directory static images. And of course, with the remove prefix, it says remove the prefix static. That leaves us with a slash, which means shows everything on the static images. So if we were to pass static forward slash one of these file names, because our prefix would have removed the static, we will be left with is the file name and we'll say, oh, give us the file name on the, you know, um, static images. And that works. Hence why our new updated JSON file works. What we need to do is go back and modify our handler and say, no, give us everything on the static. And so now it works. So when we go to static, remove everything else. And now we can go modify our home and photo wall, that HTML file to reference our style sheet and notice how there was a reference. And because everything now on the static works, well, when we rerun our program and we go back to home, we'll see our home is using the style sheet and we can check that and we can see that it's fetching the, fetching the style sheet. Notice when there's a three or four, it doesn't mean that there's a necessary error. It just means that it's cached. And so we can clear our cache and then run it and we could see that, oh, ah, our um, image one is broken. And that makes sense because now we need to specify static images. Remember, we changed things so that our static now points to that upper level, top level directory and not specifically to static images. So now when we rerun it and we refresh a few times, you can see it, it works the first time, but then it's using the cached images. Does that make sense? I know that probably looked a little fast, but all the code is there to slow it down and look at it. But really what's going to help you is to read the server mox description. That is the important thing. After you read that, it should help clear up why the path is the way it is. Just think of it this way. If I say, when I see this certain request, let's say static in the URL after the port, right? Which is that one, two, three, four is the port, but anything after that, if I see forward slash static and it should go into the directory um, static images. Well, then I'm saying look for static under that directory now. And so that is not there. And so that's why we need to use the prefix to remove that from the URL part path before it is sent to our file server. And then of course, if we want to be able to serve up other sub directories within static, we cannot say that our file server is really serving static image, it's really just serving static. Does that make sense? Okay, so just go it over slowly and read the documentation and it should help you. All right, so that's it. Um, thanks again for your time. Um, we have a full-fledged, almost well, we have a web application, believe it or not, we've developed a web application. We said we're gonna build a web server and we're gonna build a web application which is serving up pages. We're not linking between pages because um, again, that is sort of um, just HTML, you can put a button or a hypertext link and you can link to your pages and it will work if you have multiple links. All right, um, that's it for this section. Um, see you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, also, you can follow me on Twitter now, Straversity1. Um, that's the Twitter lander. Um, Instagram is just Straversity. Um, again, you'll see that in the text right below at the bottom of the screen there. Um, thumbs up the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Spread the word. See you. Take care.